For months, they came out onto the streets of Belarus, united, protesting against a presidential election that is widely believed to have been rigged. Thousands were detained and others left the country. Three years on, the movement continues in exile, with an internationally recognized leader and creative activists who won't give up. This war will be very long, but we will win. Young people are increasingly involved in the fight for the future of their country. But where does this endurance come from? And is the existence of an international leader vital for a movement like this? Away from home, here in Lithuania, Margarita Levchuk sings without fear. The famous Belarusian opera star performs internationally, but can't go home. They uh, did me criminal woman because I, I didn't support uh, Lukashenko. Alexander Lukashenko is the Russia-backed Belarusian president who many refer to as Europe's last dictator. I um, performed uh, even to Lukashenko. I know him personally. Um, I did a lot of concerts for him. So it's um, very bad for him when his people um, don't believe him and uh, uh, um, против against and against him. You know, he is a um, very strong man and very um, angry man, but he has a uh, big power, you know. Margarita believes mockery is the most potent weapon to use against the Belarusian president. And that's why now, in addition to her singing, she also does this. <laughs> Satire that targets Lukashenko and his acolytes. It's very bad, very bad people in our country with the business. Margarita's comedy aims at the macho image Lukashenko portrays of himself. Being from Iran, I understand exactly how this irritates a misogynist man in power. The videos entertain Belarusians and allow Margarita to remain politically active. Like most Belarusian protesters, Margarita left the country after the 2020 protests, around the same time as the opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. They keep in touch and work together. Margarita says the presence of an internationally recognized leader has pushed Lukashenko further into isolation. We can we can see that yes, Lukashenko have a, a relationship only with Putin. Yes, and Tikhanovskaya is everywhere with um, global leaders. Yes, together. So she's very great. She believes the fight needs time and patience to succeed. Mm, okay, we don't have our earth, our country, but we alive. We are Belarusian people. We can live and we can continue what uh, we did in our country and do something new for our country. After the crackdown on protests in 2020, some 250,000 people left Belarus to avoid arrest and torture. Over 30,000 of those who stayed were detained, and all that in a country with a population of 9 million. 
This is the Belarusian embassy in Lithuania. It's been transformed into a monument for political prisoners. It says here on this sign that tens of thousands of people suffer detentions, tortures and fines by Lukashenko's regime. According to this, many people received enormous prison terms, up to 25 years, including mothers and young children. And since November 14th, 22, there's been 1,422 political prisoners in Belarus. That's a large number and I'm sure it's gotten bigger in the past few months. This statement was placed here by Vyasna, a prominent human rights organization which left Belarus after the violent crackdown of 2020. Uh, in a nutshell, we focus on the political and civil rights uh, because that's the key problem for Belarus for many years. Uh, we provide free of charge legal advice to the victims of human rights violations, to the people who uh, uh, arrested or go to prison for protesting or for speaking out uh, or for many other things that are considered illegal in Belarus today. Biasna was founded by a Nobel Peace Prize winner, Alice Bialatsky. He's been sentenced to 10 years in prison, but his fight for a democratic Belarus goes on. We hope that we helped educate the society in the direction towards the European values, towards the democratic uh, freedoms and rights. That, uh, that's, we hope that those changes are irreversible for the Belarusian society. Your organization has been around for nearly three decades and in the past 30 years you've seen so many protests in and out um, inside Belarus. Do you think 2020 was any different because, because there was a leader that was recognized internationally? that uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska is recognized as the, uh, the only uh, leader of the Belarusian uh, democratic opposition helps us human rights defenders a lot too, because she can be our mouthpiece, she can speak on our behalf, she, can, she, has, uh, she meets with all sorts of leaders around the world, and she can, we are not allowed, we, we cannot talk to, to, to the, the presidents and prime ministers. The 2020 uprising did not remove Lukashenko, but it did attract Generation Z to the protest movement. Anna is a young member of Vyasna. She had moved to Amsterdam, but the protests in Belarus changed her life. Before the protests, I felt disconnected from the nation, from Belarusians, because I didn't feel like we had anything in common with them. I also had lived abroad and then I came back. And, but the protests showed me that a lot of people are just like me and they think the same and they have similar experiences and they don't like the, thing, the way the things are in Belarus at the moment. Uh, by, by protesting, we sort of consolidated this idea that we are like, um, one and that we are sort of together uh, and that we are not what Lukashenko thinks we are. Anna manages the helpline that activists call when they're in trouble. So in 2020 we received like thousands of uh, calls, phone calls every day. For her the existence of an internationally recognized leader is more about identity than politics. If I think about it that would definitely be a uh, disaster if she wasn't, <laughs> if she didn't exist, or that if she wouldn't be recognized by the international community. So, because then everybody would associate Belarus with Lukashenko, who is, uh, I don't know, he is horrible. <laughs> and now uh, the international community associates Belarusians with her, with uh, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, rather than with Lukashenko. And that makes you feel... And that makes me uh, feel happy. <laughs> You're proud. I I'm proud and I am uh, relieved because I wouldn't want to be associated with Lukashenko. Efforts to keep the movement alive are not limited to celebrities and institutions. Consistent street protests, even of just a few people, have kept the flag flying for almost three years. 
Oh wow, according to my app, it feels like minus 8 today. It's really cold in Vilnius. Look at my fingers, they're all red and freezing. To be honest with you, I was only expecting to see a flag and maybe a couple of people handing out flyers. But it looks like there's a bunch of people here. <laughs> As long as Putin is in power, we are not likely to see any change uh, because Lukashenko is so much dependent on him. But they are not there forever. Uh, yeah, it takes time. It's, it's about patience and work and not giving up hope. Mm -hmm.